Hello, this is Art Johnson. I'm the CEO and Chief Learning Officer at New World Communications. And I had promised that we were going to report on climate reality. Um, Al Gore on the ground at COP28. That's the International Climate um, Conference in Dubai. And uh, there's really a nice website that they, some nice pages that they've put up here. So I'm going to go right to that and invite you to browse this yourself, but I'm going to just give you a quick startup so you can then continue with that and then see how that informs what we can do next as a people locally, regionally, and across the planet. So here we go. So if you go to climaterealityproject.org slash 24 hours, uh, you can get to this great site, and it's 20, called 24 Hours of Reality on the Ground at Top 28. And so if you look over to the top, you can sign up, you can learn about us, you can take action, you can learn about their long-term work, you can then donate, you can also get trained. So this is a great way to really come up to speed quickly about what the issues are. But the conversation is happening uh, in the first week of December of the annual top uh, 28 conference here. So people around the world have been gathering in Dubai during the first week of December for the annual United Nations Climate Summit. And this, this project is on the ground along with world leaders, youth activists, indigenous representatives, and over 2,400 fossil fuel lobbyists. Um, and so they set out to peel back the curtain on this key gathering, bringing stories, conversations, and events from Dubai. And I'm going to go ahead and play this briefly here because it's it's a really good conversation that he has. And I think it's going to come up to speed uh, quickly. And then after that, I would just invite you to uh, follow up by watching, clicking through some of these uh, this content. And it's real short and sweet. So here we go. Hi, I'm Al Gore with the Climate Reality Project. And this is 24 hours of reality on the ground here at COP28. The old cliche is good news and bad news. Uh, and I guess the good news is there were some positive developments on the first day of the COP with the quick and formal establishment of the loss and damage fund. That's something that's been needed for a long time, and some people worried that was going to be the subject of a, a divisive debate throughout the negotiations, but that was established. On the other hand, there's been fair criticism of the meager pledges made to put money into that fund. Uh, they're very insufficient, uh, not even close to what is needed. It's good to have the fund, good to have some pledges, but to put it in context, the total amount of money pledged by all the countries who said they'll put money into the loss and damage fund amounts to about 49 minutes worth of the annual fossil fuel subsidies. Uh, even if you only look at the direct taxpayer subsidies to fossil fuels, it still only amounts to about four and a half hours worth of the annual yearly subsidies for fossil fuels. So, you know, it's just, uh, it's kind of a, I won't say it's a distraction, but it's something that we should understand and put in context. It's a good thing uh, if they follow through, but it's not sufficient in any way, not even close. And uh, there's also, from the very start of this uh, COP28, uh, all through to when we get to the final day, there is this clear conflict of interest that exists because the CEO of one of the largest and least responsible oil and gas companies in the world was named the president of this COP. Uh, and it, that's a conflict of interest because the president of the COP is supposed to focus on every possible way to get the world to s reduce the, the emissions from burning fossil fuels. A and yet his day job, which is way more important to him <laughs> than uh, uh, the, the the position as president of the COP has him obligated uh, to promote more fossil fuels. And we just learned that his staff has been feeding him 
memos for the meetings he has around the world with leaders about the COP28 uh, and encouraging him to ask questions about how they can buy more oil and gas from the company that he has. And the investigative journalists that undercovered this with help from whistleblowers inside that company have confirmed, they say, that in at least some of those meetings, he actually did use the occasion set up to talk about COP28 as an opportunity to sell more fossil fuels. And we've learned also that this company, Adnoc, Ab Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, has a massive plan to expand its production of oil and gas starting immediately after the end uh, of, the, of COP28. You know, it's just like, uh, that's outrageous, I, I think. Now, uh, another bit of positive news uh, in these early days uh, is that 51 of the world's oil companies publicly signed up to the so-called uh, oil and gas decarbonization charter, pledging to cut their methane emissions by 2030. Uh, but again, if you look more closely at it uh, and you examine the list of countries with the highest methane emissions from oil and gas, uh, half of the top 10 are not even represented uh, in that pledge. And some of those have the biggest methane emissions. Uh, and two years ago at COP26 in Glasgow, Scotland, there was a big methane pledge th then too. And in the years since then, the methane emissions have gone up. So a voluntary system where they monitor themselves that just uh, addresses a fraction of the problem and may not involve really determined follow through, it's just a voluntary pledge, uh, that is of concern to me. So uh, to sum up, while there's been some progress this week, there is so much more we need to do to ensure that this COP meets this historic moment and really addresses the climate crisis uh, with the seriousness and at the speed and with the scale that is absolutely necessary. We're running out of time on this crisis and we've got to get real serious about it. What I'm hoping to see was summed up uh, brilliantly and eloquently uh, by the Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, Antonio Guterres, uh, who on the opening day said very clearly to the entire uh, conference, we have to stop burning fossil fuels, period. W not just reduce them slowly, not just pretend to abate them with this carbon capture and direct air capture, which is kind of a research project in terms of it not being commercially practical. Now they use it as a bright, shiny object to convince people that, oh, we're going to be fine. We can keep burning fossil fuels because we're just going to catch all the emissions <laughs> when we burn them. It's, you know, at the present state of the technology, that's ridiculous. And by the way, they've used this for 50 years and the cost hasn't come down at all. Uh, and so it's, it's really just a distraction. But back to the Secretary General's speech, he said, don't pretend uh, about the abatement and carbon capture. Don't phase down, phase out. Uh, in order to solve the climate crisis, we have to understand the climate crisis is a fossil fuel crisis. And the solution to the climate crisis is to phase out fossil fuels. It's just that simple. Now, we also need agreement uh, on phasing out the subsidies for fossil fuels. All around the world, the taxpayers are forced by their governments to artificially subsidize the destruction of humanity's future by giving money to, to encourage more and more fossil fuel use. That's ridiculous. It's really got to stop. Uh, if governments really want to find more money to devote to solutions to the climate crisis, they can start by just stopping the use of taxpayers' money in ways that enable the oil and gas companies to keep on burning the fossil fuels that are causing this problem in the first place. So it's very straightforward. We need to ramp up use of renewables and clean energy uh, and sustainability, and we need to phase out all fossil fuels and fossil fuel subsidies, and we have to do it quickly. Scientists have been telling us for a long time already that in order to avoid the worst impacts of the climate crisis, we've got to work toward what they call true net zero, no net additions to the heat trapping gases that we put into the atmosphere, and we have to do it without any further delay. It's very important for people to continue to use their voices and 
their votes at election time uh, uh, and their choices in life and tell their leaders at the local, regional, uh, state, national level, tell those leaders uh, to get busy and take more meaningful action quickly to phase out fossil fuels. Stop the subsidies that are now propping up the fossil fuel industry. And instead, speed up the deployment of solar and wind and batteries and electric vehicles and regenerative agriculture. They work. They're cheaper. They're cleaner. They create more jobs. It's a really clear choice. And right now, we're at a tipping point, And we need more and more people to, to stand up and speak out boldly and persuasively. While this cop is going to have a record number of fossil fuel lobbyists, I'm encouraged that this year we have nearly 300 climate reality leaders here in Dubai fighting for positive change. Our goal is to increase that number uh, of climate reality leaders who are advocating for the health and future of our planet uh, to the point where they outnumber all of the fossil fuel lobbyists who are working hard to just build more profits for the big polluting fossil fuel uh, companies. So for those of you who are watching this, uh, wherever you are, I urge you to tell your leaders they need to end fossil fuel subsidies that are propping up the oil and gas industry worldwide. You can take action by clicking on the link on the screen here today, and we'll connect you uh, to how you can take meaningful action. And finally, in conclusion, let me say this. If you ever doubt that we as human beings have the political will to do this, never forget that political will is itself a renewable resource. Thank you. Wow. I'll stop this share. Um, this is really, really good. And he's doing very, very important work. If you've never seen an inconvenient truth that he did way years ago, that started this whole thing. And the Climate Reality Hub is amazing. And there are some buttons that you can click on for taking action. And the action really has to do with what you can do beginning right in your own hometown and all of that. So I'm really looking forward to that. If you need to talk to me about the action that we're taking, and uh, we're building a whole climate action consortium of really skilled people, particularly those people who see climate action as a climate opp action opportunity uh, that we can see. I mean, there are a number of companies, number of jobs, number of new climate careers that need to be developed and uh, and promoted for young people and people of all ages can ha have a role in this. I'm a boomer, but I see a real positive role in a supportive way to support generations to come. That's what I'm caring about is, hey, listen, I want to leave this world in, in, in better shape than what I'm seeing right now. And that can happen from this transformation. So if you need more information, you can call me or text me at 206-920-8067, uh, or you can email me at support at newworldcom.com. You can visit my website at newworldcom.com and take a look at my e-learning services. I have a whole suite of services that I'm committing 100% to taking uh, climate action through our mobilization campaign services whole suite of applications. We've been actually produ producing information on um, on CEO corporate responsibility. Uh, there, you know, the, some of the major polluters are companies that have huge carbon footprints and have other issues that they're not connecting with taking climate action that can actually keep more employees there, you know, and, and work ways where really front runners with what we call virtual architecture and virtual transportation to do virtual architecture that is near zero carbon footprint, is ultra affordable and ultra eco-friendly. So look for more content coming from us on that. So anyway, we look forward to working with you. We can do this, but we need to do it right here and right now. Thank you so much.